wrap up this section. Thank you, Arts. Thank you, Tetel. We'll quickly wrap up this section uh, by first saying thank you to all of our speakers for spending time with us. And we're going, we prepared a few key takeaway slides. We will just breeze through it right now. Uh, so these key takeaway slides first is embrace ambiguity. These are design mindset tips and takeaways. Next is immerse with empathy. Uh, ideate with grounded optimism. Collaborate and co-create. Learn from making and falling. Challenge the system. All right. uh, each of these uh, takeaway slides will be actually available on our website after this as downloadable content. So feel free to uh, check that out later. And I think before we move on to the Q&A portion, we, we, we're going to take a really quick break. Uh, time check, it is 6.03. So we will come back at 6.05. For a two-minute wee-wee break, if you guys need to stand up to pee, take a stretch, look away from your screen. Uh, you can also answer uh, the mentee again if you have any questions or if you uh, were, were asking the question this time, how would you design the future of the Philippines? So please feel free to take that break right now. Uh, we will cue you guys back here, 6.05. Okay, we're about to come back, but just checking out some of the questions that have popped in, sorry, some of the answers that have popped in the mentee really quickly. Okay, so how would you design a future Philippines? Green and sensitive to the community, inclusive and accessible, make a place that's actually for the Filipino and has high regard for the past, present, and future of all Filipinos and the Philippines. Uh, designing with the idea of the stakeholders in mind. I want to know that they need what they need and then the rest will follow. So yes, having that open mindset when approaching uh, problems, inclusive and encouraging for all the people. Intuitive but uplifting, accessible to all, prioritizing the masses. This one says, so many ways to approach this, but I think what's clear is that tapping into that community spirit, tapping into our sense of Kapwa uh, is an essential step. Designing for the future of our country should be inclusive. Okay. All right, so now uh, we are now going to begin the Q&A. We are officially opening the Q&A with our speakers. Okay. Hi guys, first of all, thank you so much for all the inspiring talks. Um, we just have a few questions from our audience. First one is for Tetel. So Tetel, Quinn is asking, um, after recognizing that, you, that what you're trying to do, you can do this alone. How do you map out the networks that are relevant to the community you want to help building? Right, so, well, uh, even if from the start, uh, we've always said that the only way through this, even from a public health perspective, is a whole of government, whole of society uh, approach. A whole of nation approach and uh, really what we need to do is find a way to get all the different voices in one place to be discussing the things we can do a lot of the initiatives that I talked about they were low cost low low cost and I think to a certain extent uh, it was made possible because of my personal networks now think about it in the sense that I'm just one person. I'm just one story. There are 300 doctors to the barrios deployed right now all over the country in places as far as Turtle Islands in Tawi-Tawi, 17 hours away by boat. My question is, are they part of the conversation? Uh, are we listening to their perspectives? So really, we have to find ways to amplify these voices so that when we're talking about things, I think what I've noticed is that when people talk about things, they're often latching on just one aspect of the problem. But in terms of the big picture, we really haven't sat down and talked about it. And I, it would have been great if we can open those avenues. So this, I think this is one of the... Uh, a step in the right direction. Can we recreate this? Can we make it more often? Can we get these minds all together? 
and thinking about these things. Because, for example, one of my friends who's in attendance here, he was the architect for our isolation unit. And, you know, everybody has a place a, a place in this in this public health response. So I think just starting the conversation is the first step. And hopefully we can try to start shifting the discussion to be whole of Philippines and not so urban centric. No, so that, that I guess I hope I answered the question. <laughs> yeah, you, thank you so much, Teto. Um, next question is for Selena. Selena, this is more of a technical question, actually. Someone asks, what does your supply chain look like? Do you have a warehouse here for your supplies? And and your logistics, ba, is it in the care of the farmers for in, or you using this thing now? That is a technical question. <laughs> but um, our supply chain, so we don't have a warehouse. We were just very, very lucky that one of my partners, he lives... As I mentioned earlier, he lives in Barangay Kalawis. He actually has a really big resort there where he can work. That's where they um, assemble boxes. So that's where that's where he operated. There's a kitchen there. That's where he operated Puso Kitchen as well. So we were that was very lucky for us. That's why we even have Gising Gising in the first place. So that's and also for deliveries, some farmers actually have their own. Um, delivery methods they have their own trucks to or they ride on or they deliver their produce via jeepney they're actually very advanced i mean well you know more advanced than i expected sometimes if we need to get that we hire you know there are so many logistics companies now and we hire um part logistics company to pick up the goods but but yeah these farmers they already have it's their it's their livelihood they already have a way of um delivering these produce to the to Manila. So yeah. Thank you so much, Selena. Oh no. Hi baby. <laughs> Next question is actually for Jayton. Um actually feeling ko Jayton marami lang very emotional lang talaga kami buong talk mo. But yeah. Someone asked actually in this virtual age how can we strengthen the roots of Filipinos to their communities to support the projects to support the project to support the projects like yours sorry in this virtual age how in, how could in this we... virtual age how can we strengthen the roots of Filipinos to their communities to support the projects like yours yung mga projects ng aha uh, so I think the important thing is trying to figure out, like, what is it that you can give? So oftentimes, I think, aside from resources, what we really need is talent. We need mm-hmm. talent on the ground. We need, um, we need you to think of the way you do your advocacy the same way as you would have been paid by the biggest client. Oftentimes, honestly, a lot of people give me a lot of crap work uh, because I would only give in excess of what, you know, if I have time, if I have, and I think this particular crisis dictates that you make time. Um, for learning in particular, uh, we already have a 30% dropout rate and we will continue to have students drop out of the system. And it's going to be a crisis that's going to go even further from the health crisis just because of you know, the implications of having children that, that don't go to school. So I think understanding the gravity in it and actively looking for organizations that you can help, uh, like ours, or, uh, but there, there are a ton of different organizations you can help. And maybe trying to figure out what do you do well at your work that you can do well for, for an organization like ours. So we have social media directors that are trying to make marketing plans. We have uh, designers that are trying to figure out how the learning packets that we give a little more inviting. So I think what you love and the country that you want, that you love should intersect and in figuring out how your dreams and how the dreams for your country, like what you say at AHA, and this is Turo, by the way, sorry. I, didn't, I thought no one was going to call me. Uh, this is my, my son, Turo. Um, mm. Mga harap ka para hindi lang para sa inyong sarili, pero para sa bayan. And I think you'll find opportunities uh, the same way that Tatal and, and Selena have found. 
Thank you, Jayton. Inspiring as always. And last question. Hindi pa naman last. Pero a question for our last speaker, Arts, is what were your ideas or insights about developing this these spaces also for street vendors and the urban poor in the area? Uh, this speaker is really interested in possible solutions to also improve their livelihood. Yeah, so I, I think that's a very highly contested part of street design and modernizing or revitalizing uh, heritage places. Because uh, one thing that people usually uh, don't consider is yung gentrification or displacement of communities that are already there. So in pedestrianizing yung Escolta, one of the things that we wanted really to do is to integrate yung mga nandun na, yung mga parking attendants, yung mga nagbebenta ng mani, yung mga nagbebenta ng buko juice. All of those are already contributing to the microeconomy. Uh, they are informal, yes, pero there has to be a way where we can formalize this in a sense that Makati has already done it in Legaspi or in their spaces. So uh, there has to be a way na tayo as designers can provide the tools for them to kind of be enabled to have formal spaces, to have the utilities, to uh, tell the government na provide these utilities. Tapos yung community na yan, sila na mismo yung maglilinis ng area eh, or yung magsesecure ng area for you or yung mag-assist sa mga tao when they get lost. So that's usually something that's largely overlooked. Uh, although, uh, just uh, to be transparent about it, uh, the local community, the stakeholders, uh, particularly the building owners, don't like supporting informal settlers in their streets. Because that's one problem naman for them as building owners. Uh, usually, sila yung natutulog sa mga arcades nila or parang buong families nandun. So there has, it, it's, it's a very multifaceted problem. And uh, one way of approaching it is just one, enabling them and including them in the growth of our street. And two, maybe try uh, guiding the government in integrating them in future plans, if ever. Okay, thank you, Art, for the answer. Um, we actually have a question for everyone. So you, I think we can, I guess, take turns in answering, but um, this is a question for everyone. What are the at-home or over-dinner conversations you think we should have to making design thinking less intimidating, especially for those who are hearing it for the first time? So we can start with... We can start with arts again. Um, I guess, uh, similar with what uh, Jayton has said about design thinking and our conception about it. Na it's just a process or a tool that we use to refine our uh, own design processes. It should be more like a way of life. Eh. Parang yung process of iterating it isn't really just limited to the drawing board. Uh, parang kami, uh, being based in Escolta, the, our whole existence here has been one big research in, that informed a lot of the proposals that we wanted to put up. So I think uh, design thinking really should kind of penetrate uh, the many decisions that we do in our daily lives instead of it being just a one-off thing. Thank you for that. Um, how about you, Selena? Uh, for design thinking, maybe conversations could really... Um, Focus on really defining what you want to address, like really getting to the bare, to the root of everything. Because sometimes, I what I notice, and also I'm very, um, I'm guilty. Of, I used to be guilty of this. Sometimes I still am. That I jump to the end, like I jump to the solution, or I jump to, I jump to um, what I want to the goal, what I to the result, what I want to happen. But you know, it's really you really can't skip starting with the root of what you want to address and understanding the people that you're going to address or you're going to help out with your so when you formulate a solution so you really have to there's a flow but with design thinking there's a flow you really have to start from step one you can't skip it yeah thank you selena um tetel um 
<laughs> My goodness, I'm sorry and a half. You know, to be honest, I had no idea what I was doing was design thinking. <laughs> you know, I mean, like uh, when Koi asked me to be part of this, I said, oh, what do you mean? What, what do you mean? What am I going to talk about? Like, wait, what is this design thinking anyway? So uh, I had no idea, uh, really, uh, for us in public health. It was um, what we call it is systems-based thinking. Uh, I think in conversations uh, at home and even with my friends, uh, one of the things that I had to eventually come to was coming to terms with what shaped my perspective because those are my biases. Mm -hmm. And then working through them and creating an openness to new ideas and new perspectives. So uh, I really needed to go through a journey to eventually come to that point. And sometimes I think when I discuss with some of my friends, especially uh, those coming from more urban centers, there's a very specific perspective and way that they talk about problems that really it silences a lot of other voices. Uh, and sometimes when I talk to my friends, I say, hey, but you know what? <laughs> it, my friends from the provinces, this is what they're thinking about. And this is where they're coming from. So I think uh, in order to even get started, we have to recognize what our barriers are. Um, a lot of conversations uh, and a lot of opinions, especially about everything that's happening. Sometimes I look at it and I think, you are coming from a place of privilege, and I don't think everyone is acutely aware of that. So educating ourselves, starting with ourselves, I think that's important. And then being open to new ideas, being humble enough to, to get inspiration from everyone. So I think that's the one thing we can start with also is trying to figure out what is stopping myself from connecting with reality? <laughs> or what is my bias? Thank you, Teto. Ika nga talaga ni Art. Design thinking is a way of life talaga. Yeah, thank you. And lastly, Jayton. Um, how to make design thinking a little more... The question is how to make design thinking a little less... Uh, Intimidating? Is that the question? Yes, especially for the for people who are hearing it for the first time. Well, I think that the essence of the concept. Actually, we were you know, we were recognized by IDEO recently, um, but I don't agree with how the way they, they do things. I don't agree with that concept, and I think much of the challenge of it is that the whole process in which we iterate and prototype is separate from the community itself. So a lot of the interventions, tapos na, pag nagawa na, pag dinala dyan sa Kalawi, nagawa na, pag dinala na sa Tundo. So oftentimes we, and we've had to kind of figure out a way that the community was fully aware that what they were doing was a process in which we were prototyping. So I feel like um, there are a couple of things. So there are three quick learnings that I have. Well, my son goes crazy in the background. Well, the first thing I think is um, is that don't be afraid to engage in concepts. Your community can take it. Uh, I hate it when people come in, let's do value formation, thinking that there's no values in place. There are already values in place. There are already thought process in place. Uh, it's more than just being kind and resilient. They are, I feel like, more innovative than a, a lot of us are in this room. Um, the second thing that I think is the concept that a lot of the people in the community might, or a lot of the people that you need to work with in the ecosystem might be people that don't share your same views. And oftentimes I feel like you want to work with like-minded people, but most of our community members don't have the same politics as I do. 90% of our partners don't have the same ideas or belief system. And I think the challenge of design thinking is in a world where you are basically in your own uh, echo chamber. How can people reach out and truly work together? Because a, a lot of people ask me, why did you partner with that person? How could you trust them? 
But I want to say that I need them to trust me first. And what did we do to, pro- to prove that we were trustworthy? So all of these people that are saying, oh, let's go back to the community, all of the community, may receive how often and how many times do you actually go back? And when you go back and you hear something that isn't pasok sa, sa, ano mo, sa master plan na pinag-usapan nyo, isang magandang Zoom room na to, tatanggapin mo ba? And I guess the last thing I am learning now about design thinking is that I hate it the way it's being marketed because it looks for quick results when change is so slow. And what we're learning now and what I think we need to start to realize with so many problems in our country, change will be slow. Are you willing to, to work for change that you will not see in your lifetime? Are you willing to pave the way for someone else to figure it out? Design thinking champions the solvers. But it, it was initially meant to champion the process. And I believe that's what we need to figure out. Kaya ba natin maging pagbabago ng ating niyentay kahit hindi man natin makita yung pagbabago? And I am very, very confident that not only... I'm not confident that the organization will last for 10 more years, but I'm confident in 10 years, most of the people I work with will be from the community. Thank you, Jayton. Sobrang namumove namumove yung mga tao sa chat box with what you said. Thank you so much. Um, I'm guessing we only have time for two more questions na lang. And the questions we are unable to answer, please send your questions again to collaborate at endahalf.ph. We'll retype that na lang sa chat box or DM na lang our Instagram. And we will, we will be sending them to our speakers and we'll ask them to give you answers. Okay. Our next question is for, uh, this is for everyone again. So we'll just take turns in answering this question. Um, uh, this is for everyone. Do you have concrete suggestions on how to bring this conversation to the level of the communities we serve, especially the poor? Because uh, in the beginning of the program, we said someone commented the social design is alta. So how can we bring this conversation to those people? We can start naman this time with Selena. Okay. Um, I don't agree that it's alta. I think social design is, is a um, way of doing something. When you brand design thinking as design thinking and call it design thinking, then it becomes intimidating, I guess, that you have to process everything but you know like what Tato said she didn't even know that she was doing it so you know a lot of people don't know that this is how they think and this is how everybody solves problems and you just have to you know continue this process like what uh, we've been talking about it's a it's a design thinking is a process it's not really about the result it's not about talking to a certain um, level of people you know it's just how you, it's a mindset that you have to embody and you have to um, teach people how to adapt to this certain mindset so it's not really a question of how you can bring the conversation um, that you know how you can bring the conversation to these communities it's having the conversation in the first place so you know it's about talking to them and communicating with them and talking to them the way you would talk to you know somebody who also knows design thinking, I guess. And it, it, you know, it just the constant communication and the constant connecting and having empathy for these people, you know, and then magically design thinking is already there. So that's, that's how I see it. Sorry, my dog. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Selena. How about you, Arts? Uh, yeah. That- I think that's something that uh, most of us should acknowledge. Na parang when we yun nga, when we brand uh, troubleshooting uh, certain issues as design thinking, it's kind of branded as something that's very detached from the community that it should serve. Um, th- one of the th- that acceptance really is important because that would open up possibilities for you to collaborate with the people that you want to design for. Um, 
that openness is very important kasi tayo as designers should acknowledge na hindi tayo messiah that would just offer solutions for everyone. It's something that um, our solutions should be should come from a place that enables people to design for th- for themselves. Uh, that would enable that would educate them that they already have the power to do this. Uh, you you just have to guide them and try to make them understand that this isn't something that only white people can afford. Sabing as a chat box, but uh, it's something that. Uh, everyone can do and uh, once you you break that barrier yung yung parang uh, thinking na yun it's a very exclusive thing and once you're open to collaborating with people that you would normally be butting against uh, i think dun mangyayari yung uh, magic in uh, parang providing solutions for everyone Thank you for that art. And now let's go to Jato naman. Uh the que- sorry the question was ma'am. Jen. It's okay. do you have concrete suggestions ah, on okay, how okay. to bring this conversation to the level of the communities we serve, especially the poor? So you can go to ahalearningcenter.com or go to um, email me at jaton@ahalearningcenter.com. And what we would do is that we need two kinds of teams. We need two kinds of teams. One team that will figure out how to decide materials for the many different projects that we're working on uh, with all these different partners like the Office of Vice President, like uh, the LaSalle Brothers, all the universities, and trying to figure out a more compassionate way to design things. I think that's the, what's common because I've seen a lot of hand washing. And parang, guys, they know that they need to wash their hands, but they need to figure out how they can talk to their kid like this mom that just texted me and asked me, how can I stop crying? That was the message I just got 15 minutes ago. I cry every night and my kids are watching it. Is there a material that we can create and collaborate on that addresses that need? Um, the second thing that I think is important is that if every designer, if you have, I, I believe that, let's just be very practical about it. Let's start from baby steps. Get five designers to, to sponsor one kid and to teach that person how to design as well as you do. And try to figure out a way that we can get this community grown more diverse from different parts of the Philippines. And if we could have done it, there are ways. Our students, we unloaded all of our, all of our computers and we gave it to them and we're, we're paying for load. If you could give 50 or 100 pesos for someone's load, And you can give an hour of undivided attention to make sure that person succeeds. Then it's not just about leaving people behind, which I hate. Leaving people behind, they're already left behind. It's trying to figure out how to get people ahead. We need more people ahead with us and ahead of us. When I was invited to the Obama Foundation uh, talk, uh, there was, I, was, I was overwhelmed with the number of people that said they could change the world. I never heard that in the Philippines. In this chat room, we never said we can change things. We can change things for the better. And I feel like that's the culture, not of toxic positivity, but the culture of hope that we need to start, not just in what we say, but in what we do. If you spend an hour, a week, or a month helping someone from Tondo learn how to be as good as you, if you give them an opportunity to sit into one of your uh, design classes, if you figure out or be a Tetel or a Selena to these people. How might we become the country that, that has more, the, more of the people that we deserve? If we can't see the change that we deserve, maybe we can get the people that we deserve. And sorry, I just want to say one thing. A lot of people are saying president or whatever. And I know I get, I get that. And I, thank you for the wonderful praise or whatever. But we need to figure out how this becomes normal. If you in your area are doing good, it's not just politics. Pwede ka maging pagbabago sa industriya mo. At kailangan mong, you have to stand fat with that. Because we need to become, we need to create as many people in different industries that want the best for the country and actually doing something about it. So we are not so different, mga kaibigan. We are not so different. I just do not give up. And I'm sure you won't as well. 
Amazing, Jayton. Grab it. Dropping bars talaga. Thank you so much. And lastly, syempre, Tetel. Man, Jayton, can I get an amen, guys? So, like, okay, actually, for questions like these, sometimes when people talk about it and they mention, how do we bring it to the poor? To be honest, sometimes I, I have a little bit of a conflict whenever I face that term, that collective term to group a certain number of people because um, it's laced with your, I guess, stereotypes of what you think that those kind of people are. And by the very definition of Doctors to the Barrios, we are deployed to the most disadvantaged of areas, the poorest of all municipalities. Um, some of these areas have not had a doctor in years. Um, and when I was there, I lived there. I lived there for two years. I lived with the community. I celebrated their, their joys and their pains. And when I was there, I did not feel any difference. To be honest, it was my poverty in my perspective, in my biases, that really I had to come to terms with. Because I think when, when I was there, what I realized was, man, there is so much wisdom here. There is so much wisdom. And maybe all I can bring is uh, a way to facilitate this process. So when I was there, I sat down with them. I sat down with the barangay health workers and the rural health workers. And I sat down and I said, hey, what do you guys want? What, what kind of... um." Well, what, what is your vision? If, if we were going to say Lanusa is healthy, what does that look like to you? And then how can we get there? How do you think we can get there? What are the problems of the people here? And I had to sit down and just ask them. Uh, one, let's be honest, there is a class divide in this country. And it's completely absurd to me because we are assuming certain things about each of these different people. And then when I was there, the only thing I could see was what was similar. We want the best for our families. We want to achieve the most we, want, we can in our lives. Nobody's out there thinking, man, I wanna be disadvantaged forever. Of course not, they want better lives. They want better things. So one, I think, Something that I'd really like to see from my peers and my friends, uh, honestly speaking, this talk is bringing together very similar people to a certain extent. Uh, I want us to try to understand, hey, what are your, to really look in ourselves and try to understand what are my, what is, what is blocking me? Why do I feel so different from that person? The people who you call poor, when I was there, they saved my life going up to the mountains, you know, me and my Manila feet trying to uh, climb mountains. And I was slipping and sliding and I was this close to sliding off the mountain. They're the ones who are saving me, right? We have to stop also thinking like, this is a very special process that we have packaged well for you and here it is. This is our gift to you, you're welcome. Of course not. No. So we have to uh, come to face with, uh, we have to come to terms with what is our bias, what our biases are, and then realize that, man, I don't know everything. So I need to learn from them. And then let's work together. So that that's probably how I'll say, that's, that's probably how I'll answer that. All right. Okay. Well, we're a little bit over time. So that was our last question. Again, if you weren't able to ask your question, feel free to DM and the half on Instagram. We're going to collate them, then send them to our speakers. Thank you so much again to everybody. And as we close, oh, my teammates are clapping. <laughs> Thank you so much again to Art, Selena, Jayton, and Tetel. I think I've been, you know, just practically, you know, tearing up a little bit in my seat for the past two hours. And I would just like to thank everybody who joined the talk, especially the people in the chat box in Zoom. It's been 
Like it's just been nonstop uh, the whole time. I think if the, you guys have time speakers, if you can see everybody was really just engaged. And thank you for that. Thank you to everybody. So I guess we're going to let you go from Zoom now. So um, I mean, not, I mean, sorry, not, we're going to unpin the speakers. We're going to take this last few moments to just uh, thank our sponsors and thank everybody who has just been around. So, okay. Thank you to everybody again. Um, we hope that you uh, can think about how design can affect your communities more than just how design thinking isn't just this branded package sort of thing. But I think that it can happen in our communities regardless of whether we realize it or not. And whether you're a trained designer or not, I think that's one of the key takeaways here. And we hope that you leave this talk inspired and that you guys can think about how you might want to um, execute things for your communities with your communities. So thank you again for that lively discussion. You can also visit our website. Uh, we will be uploading the we will be uploading this talk on our respective channels on Facebook as well as the Design Dialogues YouTube channel. Uh, so please check that out. We will be posting the links on Instagram and on our social media shortly. Huge shout out to our partners, CNN Life, DTI Design Center, Adobo Magazine, and Grid Magazine. So for now, thank you, everybody. Good night. I hope that all of you had a great time. Thank you to all of our friends, to everybody else who joined us. Hello, um, especially to people on Facebook. We'll be ending the stream on Facebook now. Those who are still in the call, we hope you can stick around for a group picture. Um, so...